I'm Rory Schlein, an Australian international speedway rider. Three months ago, I su suffered a spinal injury, two fractures, a shattered vertebrae, and I've had two rods and eight screws inserted into my back. This video's a kickstand to, to get me back where I want to be, and that's racing a motorbike. Speedway is probably the most roarous motorsport that's out there. You've got no brakes, you've got a 500cc single cylinder engine pushing out over 80 horsepower. Power to weight ratio is immense. We're turning right to go left. And we're doing this all without brakes against three other riders. Four laps, all done and dusted in 60 seconds. The only way I could describe it is probably the same, same way as a weightlifter lifts a load of weight in such a short period of time. Bang, it's over. But we've got to do it four or five times a night. And each race can be completely different. You can do it from the front. You can do it from coming from behind and get knocked off. Your bike can break down, snap a chain, doing 70 mile an hour with no brakes, go flying over the handlebars, dust yourself down, pick yourself up, get back on a bike, go out for your next race. There's no other sport like it. Well, uh, my background um, in, in Speedway is um, goes back from, I think I, was, I was, wasn't even a week old and I was, I was at a speedway um, watching my dad race sidecars. Um, he, was, he was classed as one of the Australia's best sidecar riders um, in the 70s and 80s and, and uh, he, um, you know, obviously growing up around motorsport, uh, both my granddads raced um, and uh, obviously with my uncle as well. He was um, four times national speed car champion in Australia as well, so I didn't really have a chance in hell of, of playing cricket or, or, or football. Um, and it was from a very early age. I wanted a motorbike. I wanted a race, and and it was speedway. It was speedway solos, which we call it back there in Australia, um, from day one. And uh, and from day one, I I said I'd go race in Europe. And I had a few people laugh at me, especially coming from Darwin. Um, but yeah, it was um, at that stage. It was about I think it was 10, 12 years later. I'd proved them all wrong. I was in. I'd won national uh, under 16 national championships, under 21 national championships, finished on the podium in the senior championships, and headed to Europe. Um, so the background, you know, if it wasn't. If my uncles weren't racing, they were there watching. Um, so they've watched every, like granddads, my, my uncles, they've, they've followed every step of my career. Um, so the whole, the whole process was, was inevitable for me to, to be, you know, a speed rider. Oh, he was tiny, always tiny. Um, always loved motorbikes from the very- Adventurous. Adventurous, yeah. yeah. Um, always in the dirt, playing with bikes, making speedways on, in the ground um, and uh, having his own little racetrack and he's done that from a very young age. Coming from a, a family and that's what, what, that's what we do, we race. Um, I raced, uh, his uncle raced, his grandfather raced, uh, or his several uncles raced, uh, my brother, Lynette's brother. Um, and it's just, just it's in the family. 
yeah, he wasn't going to become a golfer, I don't think. <laughs> Highlights and championships, um, they go back from uh, from when I was in juniors, you know, Northern Territory champion, under 16 champion, um, South Australian under 16 champion, up until into the seniors, four times South Australian senior champion, and um, you know, doing something uh, my dad could never do, um, which I always give me stick about was was win a national championship um, at uh, an under 16 age and, and an under 21 as well. So you know, they're back home there, there's some of the major ones I've won. Never won a senior title, um, uh, come close a few times, but in Europe, uh, I've been fortunate enough to, to win league titles in Britain, um, which is, is a pretty big deal. Um, you know, it's uh, pretty, pretty prestigious to win a league title uh, in Speedway, to, to get a winner's medal. Um, I was able to do that with Coventry um, twice. Um, and I was just saying before, under 21, I finished fourth one year and uh, obviously was cut short one year when I was favourite, but individual wise, I'd say winning the Elite League Riders Championship, which is the best um, riders in the world in, in currently riding in, in the British League which is the biggest uh, individual meeting outside Cardiff in the Grand Prix. I've been, I've been lucky enough to win that twice, beating some of the world's best riders. Um, and obviously also um, winning an FIM gold medal uh, with a Swedish team, uh, Mortala, um, last year, uh, the World Speedway League, which was pretty cool because they don't normally hand out FIM gold medals, um, so yeah, that uh, that hangs quite proudly up in, in my uh, trophy room. Coming to Europe was 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 scary, but I was I was lucky in a way because I actually did have um, my dad and mum come along with me. Long story short, the way the work permits worked at the time, it was easier for me to come with them because um, I was under the age of 18 and I was classed as a minor. So we found a loophole in, in um, the system and, and uh, we utilised it. So I come over on a lower average than, than what I would have come on. Um, so I was lucky in a way, but leaving the rest of my family behind, my brother and my sister and um, all my friends from high school, it was and definitely a culture shock when I got here, um, which, which, you know, which I'm something used to now. You, know, you can almost call me half a pond. We, we'd never been out, outside the country. And we just we packed up everything up. I put uh, one rolling chassis, my toolbox, uh, a heap of our own personal belongings uh, on a pallet, sent it over by boat. We packed up his race bike that he had here in Australia, pulled it apart, put it in a cardboard box, and took it with us on the plane. Uh, we, we'd never been outside Australia. We'd never seen snow. <laughs> we got to. Edinburgh, and we walked outside the terminal, and it was snowing. It was an eye opener, that's yeah, for sure. Was. We le it was a di it was really different, but was, we loved it. We loved it. Was it was an adventure there. that we would never ever trade for anything. We threw in our jobs. We threw I, in I, everything. I, I had a small business to solve that. Um, we just packed up and went. You know, we come from the Northern Territory, where going to race meetings is is travelling. Um, Alice Springs from Darwin was a thousand mile. We would do that for a weekend. Um, I travelled racing and it was just, we're going to go racing in England. Okay, let's pack up and go. It was a big, big change. Um, but at the time I was riding a, a wave anyway because I was doing what I wanted to do from day one. I'd tell my mates in Australia, some of them used to laugh at me, but I said I'd be racing a bike for a living. Uh, told my teachers, some of them laughed in my face, some of them told me I'd never accomplish anything. Um, wish I could see some of them now. But I'm, like I said, I was, I was and I still am living my dream and not many people can say they do that. Um, and another thing that 
that surprises a lot of people say, what are you going to do after Speedway, especially with an injury like what I've gone through? And I said, well, what do you mean what I'm going to do after Speedway? I've lived my dream, I'm doing what I want now. After is, is retirement, well not necessarily retirement, it would be living the normal life. And I can then obviously say, I've lived my dream. I've never ever seen anybody who is as positive as he is with the amount of times he's been knocked down through injury and got back up and achieved what he has achieved in his racing career. I mean, he's always had positive people around him. He's had strong backers, the people that give him right advice and he takes it, he takes advice, he listens to it and take, picks out what he believes is you know, good, good words, good advice, and, um, and, and he's done that. He's listened to people, and I think that's what's made him move forward. The difference between winning and losing, for me, I, I believe I've, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a gung-ho rider. I don't hang it on, on the line a lot. I've always been, I always used my head. Um, so, for me, I've always liked to think I could wear wear down my opponents if I'm from like coming from behind. But also, if I've ever got in front, you know, I'm not saying I'm pig-headed or not, but it, it either takes a bloody good rider or a really, really good race um, for someone to pass me, which has happened. I know that, but uh, I know I'm fast, and when I do hit fresh air, it's um, normally lights out. Racing in um, three different leagues is a lot of people don't realise how, how much travelling, how many meetings we're doing doing a week. Um, you know, we'll we'll race on a on a Wednesday in Kings Lynn, uh, do four or five races that night, race at Swindon on a Thursday. Uh, might have Friday off. I'll jump in the car and drive down to the airport on the Saturday and fly out Saturday and do a practice in Poland, getting ready for uh, a Polish match on Sunday. Well, you know, where the crowd attendances are there, you know, can average between 5,000 and, and 20,000, um, if you want to call it. It's, uh, it is their, their largest sport out there, so it's pretty intense. Um, and uh, straight after that, you, you're back in the van, traveling to another hotel and another airport flying back into to England on on the Monday, race at Wolverhampton in Birmingham, uh, or or it could be in Manchester, up at Bellevue, um, and then literally drive down from, from Manchester to Stansted for a six o'clock flight the next morning to fly to Sweden on the Tuesday to do the same thing again, race in Sweden. Um, and uh, the process just keeps getting re repeated over and over, literally fly back in on the Wednesday and we start all over again. Um, so, you know, we could race every day of the week in, in four or five different countries. Uh, open meetings in Germany, open meetings in Russia. Um, you know, there's tracks in Latvia. Uh, the day we, if there's a day we're not riding, uh, we're resting. And that's for nine months of the year. Um, you know, this, this year we were penciled in to do over 100 meetings in eight months. Um, which is pretty scary in a way, but you know that's how busy speedway life can be. You know, the Grand Prix riders are doing it week in, week out. Um, you know, three, four different flights every week. Um, it gets tough. You sleep where you can, you eat where you can, and uh, yeah, it's pretty intense. That's always there, you know, when when you see. Uh, what his, um, his schedule is at the start of the year when he'd, he'd ring us or when we were there um, and he'd say, I'm going to do this amount of meetings. And, and, you know, we would say, you think that's too many? Are you going to, you know, you're going to be spreading yourself a little bit too thin? But we went to England the first year and he rode in Conference League or second half or guested in Premier League in 88 meetings yes, in the is. first year. And he'd done five meetings in Australia on 500 before we left. He never seems to 
I know at the end of the year he's, he's pretty burnt out and tired, you know, and, and they all are, all the lads. Uh, but he just seems to, to strive on, you know, if he's, if he's idle, then he's, he's not at his best.